What is up, guys? This is David from Bronx Banner coming at you with another episode, episode six of Hot Takes. I am so, so glad to bring you back Hot Takes onto the channel. If you guys don't know, this is a pretty regular occurrence. I'd say about a couple of months ago before the offseason really started taking off with all these signings. Uh, and then once all those offseason stuff started happening, it was kind of hard to keep up with the news and then hot takes. And so I thought, why not? better to bring it back during the regular season uh just to kind of get a gauge of how everyone's feeling how everyone's doing what if you guys don't know what hot takes is what the show this segment is all about it's all about addressing your guys's hot takes that you guys drop down in the comments drop down if you're following me on any social media x twitter instagram facebook uh tiktok all your hot takes or in the comments down below I will be addressing those in Hot Takes episodes, addressing three of them. Only the best ones get addressed. And in today's episode, we have some very, very interesting, awesome ones. I'd argue some of the better Hot Takes we've had on this channel. So what a better way to bring it back this year than with some of the better Hot Takes we've had all year. So if you have any interesting takes, whether that's good, bad, ugly, Hot Takes on the Yankees, like for example, you could... My, one of my hot takes I've been saying for a while is Anthony Volpe can easily finish top three in MVP. I know it's very easy to say right now, but we have a long season. Anything could happen. Drop that down in the comments below with hashtag hot takes so I know you want to be included in the next episode. That's your best way to tell me that you want to see more of this. And make sure you subscribe. So hopping right into the first hot take of this 2024 season, Yuki Matsui of the Mets. Man, shout out to you, Yuki. You said this on the live show, The Catch Up. Um, another uh, shameless plug. If you want to be um, in the live shows, it is going to be 6 p.m. Friday Eastern Time. Every 6 p.m. Friday Eastern Time. Yuki said on the live show that the Yankees are going to DFA Giancarlo Stanton. Man, 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 man. What a hot take. It is... Now, before everyone starts running into the comments and starts, you know, getting on my, my guy, Yuki, shout out to you, Yuki, this is what a hot take is. This is absolutely a hot take, and it's not without the realm of reality, okay, because John Carlos Dayton is doing good now, he's looking good now, but we all know what kind of streaky hitter he is. He had a rough start to the season, it was only a couple of games. Now he's heating up and he's been consistently good, more or less. He had one game where he went 0 for 4, but it's okay. It's whatever. Um, it happens to the best of players. Um, but he's predicting that, I guess, Giancarlo Stanton is going to regress, come back down to earth, and struggle, and then get DFA'd. And to add a little bit of context to this comment, this was when we were talking about a little bit about Jason Dominguez's return on the live show and about what that would look like. So maybe Yuki's kind of addressing that he thinks because of Jason Dominguez's return coming in a couple of months uh, that they may want to DFA Stanton, assuming that he's going to regress back down. Listen, he's 34 years old, definitely getting into the ugly parts of 30. Uh, he has lost weight. We talked about that already. It's a funny little joke that I mentioned on X is that he beat out an infield single, which he did against the Cleveland Indians in the uh, final game of the series. Um, but let's look, let's talk about his numbers right now as of this second. He leads the team in home runs with four home runs. He has nine RBIs, of course, zero stolen bases. His average is 250, which for Stanton, his career average is 259. And uh, he has currently a 250 average. If Stanton can have a 250 average, that is very good for what we would have expected for Stanton. So he's doing pretty good in that department. His on-base percentage, and look, 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 let me skip a little bit. His on-base plus slugging is 829, which I will take. You know, his career is 877. That's kind of where I would hope. But anything below 800 is not great. Um, but if he could get that up to the 850s to 900s, that would be amazing for what we'd expect from Joe Carlos Stanton, a DH hitter. Now, my biggest concern is his on-base percentage. Despite his him doing well, I know it's not necessarily a part of his game, but he's not walking a lot. His average is at 250, but his on-base is at 290, 291, not even above 300. So... That's a little bit concerning. Not too sure how I feel about that, even with his uh, progression uh, that he's had and his better games that he's had as of late. 
So I can easily see how it's kind of hard to expect him uh, to continue to hit at the rate that he's hitting or have the type of productivity that he's having without much walks happening. So we know when he hits the ball, it's going to be going far, but it's all about can we expect this to continue to happen? And looking at these numbers, it's not hinting that he can keep this up the whole season at all. I love Stan. I've talked about it plenty of times. I don't see how he can keep this up for the whole entire season. So I know I don't want to be negative Nancy when we address this hot take, but I, I agree. Not Well, hold up. I agree that Staten's not going to be looking good. I don't think the Yankees are going to DFA, though. Let me backtrack. And the sole reason is because of the salary. The most amount of money that I've seen the Yankees DFA, at least at that latest that I've remembered, was Aaron Hicks. He's a, he was owed a good amount. He owed, I think... 20 to 30 mil. It was 10 million a year. He had two to three years left on his contract. Can't remember. We owed him a decent amount. Satan, we owe him way more. And I don't think we're going to DFA him. Um, and again, the respect that the Yankees have for him, the way he's handled everything. Aaron Hicks was a bad storm of everything. He did not handle the New York press well. He did not handle the pressure well. He was just falling apart. He wasn't doing good at the plate. He wasn't doing good on the field. It just was nothing was working out for him. John Carlos Stanton, and he uh, he didn't know as much money as John Carlos Stanton. So I just don't think that uh, the the Yankees are going to want to DFA that much money. I think they'd rather bench him, as they've seen as of late. They've benched him a lot more than we've seen probably all of last year when he has been healthy last year. So I could see them benching him a lot more. But I'd go as far as saying if – Yuki's logic is that they're going to DFA him because of Dominguez's return. I think the Yankees are more likely going to leave Dominguez down in AAA all year and keep Stanton than to call Dominguez up after rehab and DFA Stanton. That is my rebuttal to that. So I love the hot take, though. Awesome, awesome hot take. Definitely something to think about and consider. Let me know what you guys think down in the comments below about this first hot take. But let's jump right into the second one. And hot take number two is is by a familiar name, uh, Junba Files, 5316. He's been on hot takes before and has had great hot takes. He has said here, Oswaldo will continue to break out and become a legitimate option for third base moving forward. I would say he is a legitimate option for third base. As of right now, you saw the way that they were they put John Birdie on the IL, how little of an eye that the whole organization, Aaron Boone, the team, and even Yankee fans batted when they heard that Birdie was going on the IL. Not to shame Birdie and his maybe not amazing, amazing start to his Yankee tenure, but more to us believing in what Oswaldo could be and has been as of late for the Yankees this year. Oswaldo has been, what, over a 300 batting average? I'm not sure if that's dipped a little bit down below uh below now that he's a little came a little bit down back to earth but he's been still coming in clutch his ops is still in the 900s to even one dot in it maybe he's been making uh he was the one that got our sole only run in yesterday or yeah yesterday's game to open the toronto series so oswaldo's still producing i think he still will continue he may definitely regress from the amazing hot start he was being compared to juan soto in the beginning of this season i don't think he's going to keep that up but i absolutely think he could be a 800 plus uh, uh ops player 800 to 900 max ops third baseman for us which would be amazing i think he could be a 20 home run third baseman with a 270 average which would be uh, such a great progression uh, from just what we've gotten from third base in the past few seasons and from what we have have expected and gotten from Oswaldo Cabrera, along with some solid defense. Yes, I know he's committed errors at third base, but I think he's going to get comfortable there. I'm, I'm liking this hot take. I agree with this hot take. I'll be honest, uh, Jumba, I don't think it's the hottest take, but uh, I mean, I think it, it does take a good amount of boldness to think that he's going to outplay um, and uh, he's going to outplay DJ enough to take him out of a position that, again, the Yankees respect highly their veterans. DJ's a veteran that they respect very highly. So for Oswaldo to come in out of the scene and just take that position entirely, 
uh, does take a bit of a hot take. Uh, but I think that Oswaldo has merited that to be the case. And uh, I th believe in this hot take even more now because of Glaber Torres' struggles. Not that I think that the Yankees are going to toss Glaber Torres to the side or anything, but I could see with Glaber Torres struggling not only defensively as he always has, but even offensively, that they may bring DJ in to kind of platoon with second base more than what maybe what they were initially expecting uh, because Glaber Torres hasn't been producing to the expectation that we expected. That makes sense. Um... So they may platoon him, give Glaber a few days off or rest, and letting DJ play a second, therefore letting Oswaldo be more of an everyday third baseman than maybe what we expected heading into the season. Now, think about this. Oswaldo wasn't even in the picture as an everyday third baseman heading into the season, nor was he expected to be an everyday player heading into this season uh, if it wasn't for the injuries. So everything works out for a reason, and... If it required DJ to be hurt for a couple of weeks uh, and John Birdie to be on the 10-day IL for us to see a 800 to 900 plus, and right now almost one dot in it in the OPS department at third base, I would take that. And what better person to have that for than Oswaldo? I love Oswaldo. So amazing take, Joomba Files. Um, and if you're liking this content so far, just thought I'd mention it. Subscribe. It would mean a lot. Uh, you guys have been showing a lot of love in most recent videos, so thank you so much. Let's keep it up. As we hop into the last hot take of this episode, and again, a reminder, if you want to be featured in this, uh, the next hot take on episode seven, drop your hot takes down below. If you're getting a little bit riled up with some of these hot takes, drop down what you think is a hot take for the whole entire season, trade deadline, anything, nothing's off limits. As long as it's Yankees related, I will address it in the next hot takes episode only the hottest hot takes will be featured. And uh, I will pump these out as frequently as you guys comment. So drop them down below. Hot take number three is actually the first hot take on Twitter. So shout out to you on XOMuray271. I'm going to give this the seal of the best hot take of this episode. He says the Yankees will set a new franchise record for the most walks in a season which was the last record was 765 walks by the 1932 Yankees. That's nearly five walks a game. The current pace for the Yankees right now is 900 walks. First of all, shout out to you, Omar, for being the first hot takes uh, via X. So if you're not following my X, follow me on X on Bronx underscore banter. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm talking a lot on there. You're not You're not going to want to miss everything I have to say. Some of you, are, I've, I've peeped to you. Some of you guys have been following. But if you aren't, make sure you follow me on X. But this is an amazing hot take. I love the way that you broke it down. I love the way that you've projected um, what pace we're on uh, at this rate. And uh, though it's the hot take of the episode because of how much effort you put into it, I don't think this is too far of a stretch of a hot take. This is an awesome stat to bring up to uh, to our awareness. We all know how much the Yankees have valued on um, base percentage and walks. Anthony Rizzo is going to get plugged by balls all year long. Uh, pause. Um, they're gonna he's gonna get plugged by pitches all year long, uh, being crowding the plate. So we know he's gonna get his fair share of walks. Juan Soto, Juan Soto, he's gonna get a hundred plus walks. Judge has been getting a hundred plus walks the last few seasons just because of how scary he's been at the plate. Uh, like I said before, Stanton maybe not so much. Uh, uh, I'll be fair, uh, honest, with Volpe being as on fire as he has been, he's not getting as many walks as, you know, maybe we expect from some of these other guys, so maybe not so much. Uh, but I still, again, with the pace that we're at at 900 walks, even with regression from the team in terms of offensive productivity, even though I think we will progress overall as a team offensively, I don't think the walks are going to slow down anytime soon. And really, a lot of that has been contributed to Judge and Soto leading the way. They're easily going to get you 200, 200 plus walks together. So uh, not including all the other uh, players on the team uh, and how much the Yankees value walks and on-base percentage, I think they're going to crush this number as projected by Omaray. So amazing, amazing hot take. Love this hot take. Um, and, uh, and yeah, that is will about do it and uh guys again make sure you subscribe if you're liking this hot takes if you want to see more of these different content and segments outside of just general yankee news um make sure that you show the support on this video now if you don't like it it's a 
Oh, excuse me. It's all right. It's totally okay. Uh, that tells me that maybe I shouldn't show this content as much to you guys. But make sure, again, if you do like it, like, comment, subscribe, and leave as you read right there down on the bottom. Whoa. <laughs> leave your hot takes down in the comments below on X, on any of my social medias if you're following me on there. And if you like today's episode, please make sure you subscribe down below. It'll truly mean the world. Check out what YouTube suggests will be a great video for you. And also, The Martian wants you to subscribe. Judge wants you to subscribe. So make sure you do. And until next time, peace and be blessed.